Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Boosted Motorsports. My name is John and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the heater hoses on this Dodge Viper GTS ACR Edition. So I've pretty much replaced most of the hoses. So I've already replaced the upper and lower rad hose with these silicone Mishimoto ones. And that was a while back. Uh, the only other ones that are pending are the heater hoses. So they're mostly on the other side. So I'll walk around there and show you guys. And I have them and I think they need to finally be done. So these are all rubber, as you can see. And another thing we're gonna be replacing along with this is this hard piping as well, because mine has deteriorated over the years for whatever reason. Um, I'm not sure if maybe a previous owner ran some water or whatnot, but um, mine isn't in the best shape, so I bought a brand new Mopar one. So also you're gonna see all these hoses down here. Um, I'm not gonna change this one just yet, the one that runs up to the uh, thermostat housing because I'm gonna be taking off the intake manifold soon and it's kind of not the easiest to get to. You can see the clamp there, but this is gonna be coming off soon to do a row supercharger. So I'm gonna replace all the other ones except for that one for now. But uh, let's get into it and I'll show you guys all of these silicone uh, hoses here. So here they all are. I got them from viperpartsusa.com. Uh, as far as money wise, this was the only place I could really find that had them. Um, there was the Viper tax on these, unfortunately, but there's not that many people that do supply them. So this is the kit. It comes in a 96 to 2000 heater hose set because I think they changed it in 01 to 02. So I've got the right kit for my vehicle and uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, the other thing too is like I mentioned, I did get this brand new Mopar part and I know it's pretty much discontinued. So if you guys are doing this, you might want to double check. And there's also two versions of this. So make sure that you guys get the right one. There was a revision to this. I don't know if it has to do with the 01 and 02s. So similarly to how you can see on that sheet that the hoses are different. But either way, this is the part that I need for this one. And I'm glad that I was able to source it out because parts are starting to get a little bit harder to find. So let's get to work. All right, so first things first, under the hood, if you guys haven't drained the coolant, you're going to need to do that for sure. Easiest way I find is there is a drain on the bottom of the rad, but sometimes they don't want to come out. And if it happens to strip or do something funny, you're taking the rad out of the car. So easier than that, is the lower rad hose just take the clamp off and you can pop it off you can even get your hand in here i actually did it with my air box still on but take the air box off and it gives you a lot more room all right guys so we're gonna take off the air box to give ourselves a little bit more room you'll notice in here we're gonna get to those two clamps right down there on the bottom of the water pump so that's gonna be fun i'm gonna take off the air box first we're gonna take this off there's a sensor here two band clamps uh, there's a hose there and then these three uh, quick screws you just unscrew them with your hands and then the air box pops off so let's get it out of our way make a bit more room then we'll move on to the next step Okay guys, air box is removed, pretty simple. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two clamps. I guess I'll get the two out of our way that are easiest and uh, then we'll move on to the next. All right, so we've worked this hose free. I mentioned just rocking it back and forth. Now we should be able to slide it off. So we've got that one off. Now let's work on the other two on the other side. All right, so just before I disconnect this, uh, I don't wanna mix up which one goes on what side, but this is the reason why, as you can see, why I replaced it, because it's kind of nasty looking inside. But I don't know if there's much you can do about this besides get some company to professionally coat it, but even the brand new one, I don't know if you guys can see, but there is just like ever so slight surface rust just from it sitting in whatever warehouse. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hopefully you can see it, but it is still a tiny bit of surface rust inside. Definitely not any concern compared to that one, but you can see why that issue occurs. Um, so like I said, before I disconnect these, because this is going to be a whole hose section, I'm going to disconnect those two off the water pump and 
deal with the ones down here. I also might as well take off the air box so that we can easily get to the one here. It goes on this reservoir, so let's do that as well. Because I think we might as well make ourselves a little bit extra room. So take off this air box as well. And it consists of just a few screws. You can see there's one here, another Phillips one there. And then there's a bolt here and a bolt there. So four fasteners and then the air box pops out. Okay, so we'll move this Phillips screw and the bolt here. And with all that room, this should just pop up out of here. And we got more room. All right, so there's that clamp there. So let's remove that one and then we can work on the next one. And before we get too much further, I just remembered Jason gave us this crazy kit that has these band clamp pliers. So this is gonna make our lives a lot easier actually. It's got the remote style one, so you hook this on and then you squeeze the pliers remotely. So let's use this instead. All right, so we got the tool on there and then I guess we squeeze remotely. I haven't used these fancy things too much, but I know they work. Ooh, look at that. So we'll release this here. Wow, that makes things so easy, I can't even tell you. All right, so that one's off. We should be able to spin this guy. I don't know if there's anything left in the bottom of my reservoir. I guess we'll find out in a second. But either way, this one is free. Okay, so that one's off. Let's work on those other lower two. Okay, so these two are down here and it's kind of hard to illustrate, but hopefully our remote pliers are gonna come in handy here as well. So let's go ahead and get those clamps off down there. Okay guys, so after pretty much smashing my knuckles, we got her off. So I got this hose off and I can pull it up and out of here. So there's one out of the way. Okay, here we go with the next one. I'm gonna see if I can get this tool in here. All right, so I got them on, I'm gonna squeeze them. Okay, so I got the clamp off the rubber. Oh yeah. Okay, we got her. All right, so we've got our two old hoses here and I'm gonna transfer them to the new. So if you guys are curious, they're pretty good matchup. So we got those ones there and then this one looks like it's gonna be this one. So there we go, we got both matched. I'm gonna move my clamps across and then we can put them back on. So the power dip, I don't know if you guys saw that. The power dipping over here, they've been saying since it's such a heat wave out that everybody running their EC was gonna maybe cause a power outage. So hopefully that does not occur. But that's why I'm working on this at nighttime right now because it's so freaking hot in the garage. It's been roasting. Okay, so I'm gonna slide on this portion on our water pump. And I might at some point put the wa a new water pump on here just because Right now they're somewhat readily available. Not to throw parts at something for no reason, but with this car you never know when they're gonna stop producing some of the parts. All right, so I did manage to get that clamp on there, which is probably gonna be the hardest spot for me to show you guys. But she's on there and I repositioned the clamp so I can actually get it with the remote pliers. And now I'm just gonna put this one on and I'm gonna be conscious to rotate this hose as far away from the exhaust as I can, as you can imagine. So I'm rotating this so that it pushes this here and I'll put this clamp on right there. All right guys, so we got the clamp on there and we got the hose situated so it is as far away from our exhaust as possible. And that one's done. So let's go ahead and get this little guy on here. And then we can get up top to the easy ones. They're all right here, except for these ones that are buried down there. All right, guys, that was not fun at all, but the two clamps, as you can hopefully see, are on. And like I said, not fun at all, but they're finally on, so we're good. Um, I'd rather use those in the worm style. The worm style would probably be a little bit easier to get in there, but those constant tension clamps are gonna be the ticket for us, so. Um, now we can go ahead and get this on. So I'm gonna work on this stuff and we'll put our new hard line in and all these other heater hoses. Okay, so realistically, 
We didn't, wouldn't need to take this off, but I do want the clamps from it. So that's the only reason we're gonna be taking these off. Okay, so these style of clamp, you'll see there's a little tiny tab right there. You bend that back over and then you can undo the latch. So same thing on that, see that little tiny tab? You bend that back straight and then you can just pick it and the whole thing will pop open. So we'll do that now. Okay, so now that that's bent up, you can get underneath it and just open it up and it'll just spread open. There it is. Okay, here we go with the new hoses. So we'll slide this one over top. Put our clamp on. And then there's these two. I want to share with you guys this one hose. So you can see this hose, it's pretty short and it just has this nice arch in it. The one that's supplied with this kit is significantly longer. I don't know if it's revised and they're closed right now to find out, but you can probably see this is supposed to be over here. So I think, I mean, it's still gonna work. I just don't know if they're trying to reroute it in a place that they thought was better. So I'm trying to figure out how best I want to route these through here. I don't want to cut it just now in case they tell me that they're gonna send me the correct hose or something, but I think it's supposed to be in and around here. I believe the old ones went around here, but um, the one that they supply you for the rear doesn't seem like it wants to go over that way, so I'm gonna go this way, which is fine. Unless, maybe I send both of them behind here. Mine may have not been routed correctly from the get-go, so I wonder if that's the case. Let me try flipping it behind this bracket for the cowl. Alright guys, so it's actually a few days later and I spoke to the vendor and they ended up sending me the correct hoses. So, this is what we ended up working out. It did cost me extra money. Uh, it cost me about $65 to get these two delivered to me. And then I'm going to get credited, I don't know, maybe $20 or $30 for the other hose. But whatever, it is what it is. It's uh, it kind of just comes with the Viper car. So anyways, this one here is as you can see they've noted cut to fit uh, It also says cut to fit to desired length on this one. So this long one Honestly, I'm only gonna need about this much But obviously they give you like twice or even three times the amount same time same thing with this one This is the one we're gonna be installing this one goes underneath the intake manifold So I'm not gonna do it today until we end up doing the supercharger I'll throw it on because the intake manifold has to come off at that point. So uh, this one here, we're gonna size it up. I'll pop the hood. She's looking cherry. I actually waxed this thing the other day and it looks incredible. So uh, I'm gonna take off that rubber one off there. Let's pop the hood, I'll show you what's up. And I just received these hose clamps that we're gonna be using on the Viper. So I'll link these for you guys, but there's two different sizes and it looks like the smaller of the two. Uh, I ordered these because these are the ones that we're gonna use on the silicone hoses, so they're not gonna bite into the actual silicone hose and tear it. They're a beefy looking clamp, and it's gonna get the job done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these over to the garage. Oh, just so you guys know, the reason why there's two boxes, is these ones are a little bit too big. I wasn't sure which size. Those are just slightly bigger, but these are gonna be just the right ticket. This one is going to fit right about there we're gonna have to cut it to the correct length so let's get this rubber one out of here and then i can uh, figure this out and also got our snazzy clamp there so i'll go ahead and we're gonna put one of these clamps on this side too i'm still going to try to use the stock constant tension clamps on the other side uh, I just feel like they're a nicer clamp, but these are pretty nice too, so we'll see. If I have any leaking issues, I'll change them all over to this style, but for now, I'm gonna try to use the constant tension on that side. All right, well, it looks like we might be switching over to these nice clamps sooner than I thought, because when I close it, it does not wanna, or open, I should say, close the pliers, but try to open the clamp. It is so tight that I can't really get it around it for whatever reason, so. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just put on the nicer clamp. I might be really trying to debate whether I should try to swap out that clamp. The other one that's behind it. So let's pop this off, I guess. So here's the old hose, old rubber hose. And I'm trying to debate whether I should try to get this other one back here in the back. 
just get it off while I can and just put the nicer newer clamps on here I might just do it anyways guys so let me pop this out of here we'll get that new hose in place okay so we got it in place and it's not touching right there so it's probably gonna be somewhere right around here that we're gonna cut and last little trick I have for you guys is if you're curious how much fluid is in your front fascia overfill or overflow tank it's hard to see so what I do is I'll take like a light and you can take your cell phone or whatever and I'll stick it in the front bumper and it illuminates your tank so you get an idea of how much you've got in there so you can see your fluid level in that sight glass and then if and when you need to fill or top that up just pop this hose off the side of the neck here Put a funnel in, fill it with fluid here, and then check it through that sight glass. All right guys, so that's a wrap for this video. So if you have any questions on this, leave a comment down in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer your question. Also, everything that we use will be in the description box below so you guys can check out all the parts that we used. And anything else you guys wanna see, like I said, we're gonna be supercharging this very soon. So a bunch of other mods are coming on the way. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also hit that subscribe button so you're notified of all the latest videos and when a new video is released and we'll see you on the next video.